What's up, boss? This is Abraham's wallet. We span the gap between the austerity of obedience to God and the prosperity rising from faithfulness. Run your home and your dough like a biblical boss. All right. Hi, Mark. Hey, Where how's it going? Where are we? Where are we? We're in Holiday, Utah, with an A. Okay, Holiday. Yeah. And um, that reminds me of the Madonna song. Yeah, okay. Well, this is the tree that we know that you've been thinking about. When a guy like you sees a tree like that, I bet you think tree Let's house. Let's tree house. But that's the difference in us. So... We're here at my home, and we're going to do our typical Abraham's Wallet home walkthrough okay. for the people. But I see a couple of interesting things out here before we do the walkthrough, Yeah, which are family-friendly. First of all, you got yourself a little mini basketball court in your front yard. Yeah, that hoop has been there since the, the 70s, uh-huh. and we actually have people that stop by this house and talk about when they used to play basketball on this hoop when they were kids oh and now goodness. they're older than me oh my goodness so it's kind of fun and there's a couple of uh, chairs there like you can sit here and watch the, the car crashes go that's by. right this whole thing is about to get ripped to the ground oh and, really and redone so because of a family vision no because you'll notice here is a good example uh, we have some decay happening okay. so you have to maintain a house yep. and cost money to get a house going we're experiencing that all right right now so we're just gonna walk through and then you tell us any decisions that you have made for the sake of okay. your family vision and rhythms okay so decision number one is when we moved into this house my wife had a dream about a house that had a big orange door on it okay she loves Halloween we're still not sure about the spiritual significance of that but just to be safe, we painted the door orange. Okay. I see there's a mezuzah here. Yes, Shema. All right. Right there. Why do you do that? Are you Jewish? No, but I really like the idea that when we come and go, we're going to go with the word of the Lord on our lips. Uh, and so this is one of those Jewish things that I like. Yeah, it works out. There's actually some new and old testament passages okay, rolled you up threw in this a sucker. New in there. Okay. So Mixing it's not it up. it's not kosher. Okay. Now, let's see here. We got a gigantic living space going here. Yeah. So when we moved into this house, the you the place we're in right now was four different rooms. Okay. Uh, there was like a front room, a terrible kitchen, and we thought, "Hey, we will just uh, live with it for a year or two, see how it lives, and then redo it. And I walked over to the kitchen cabinet and opened it and it fell off the wall. Oh no. I mean, this house was in poor condition. Uh huh. So we promptly tore all the walls down. There was, there was a hot tub above us huh. right here, uh -huh. which caused dramatic problems in the renovation. Maybe put timeline. in in the 70s, same time the basketball goal was? Possibly. Uh -huh. um, but we, we kind of knew, we've done this a few times to houses where we tore them up and, and redid. And we knew that for us, um, come over here. And mm -hmm. We knew that we tended to love having lots of people over. And most of the time when we had people over, we were, because of the way our schedules go, we were inviting them to come home at six and we're just kind of getting ready to start cooking at six. So we said, let's make a kitchen that's a living space. And that's exactly what happens here. Yeah. Um, this, this is one space, but it's very easy to be cooking and hanging out with people there and doing all the stuff. So, yeah. Um, Yelling over at the people sitting here at the big long table, little sitting area beyond that. Can I can I just get a little bit financial advisory here though? Yeah. One thing is when when you do a kitchen project like this, this was not a cheap renovation, but they sort of assume the the, the designers and the contractors that well you're already gonna spend a ton of money. 
So let's just pack it in. Right. And it's very easy not to look for cost-saving opportunities. But things like choosing a regular sized fridge that you can go buy at Home Depot oh. instead of one of these built-in sub Contractor. Sub-Zero. Yeah. Not only is it about one-tenth of the price when you buy it, oh. Doyle will come out and fix this sucker when the uh, ice dispenser breaks or whatever for a whole lot less than the Sub-Zero repairman. Great. Same deal here with the uh, the range. Uh -huh. They wanted us to put in a fancy whatever oh, yeah. Viking yeah, yeah, they love super that. giant range. And most people are so turned on and flattered at the idea of spending a bunch of money on so they can say I had a fancy whatever. Right. This was a cheaper option. So my wife's very good at redoing houses and she was also very good at doing this on a remarkably low budget. Great. Uh, so so uh, the, the end product is, as you said, you got a space here that, I don't know, definitely 30 people can fit in very comfortably. How many people have you squashed in here? Uh, we recently had a gathering with 150. Okay. And that spilled out into the backyard. Definitely used the backyard space okay. too, but uh, we can have a lot of people in here. I don't mind packing it full of folks. Um, I think it's a great goal, something that you decided very early on, especially when the cabinets fell off, but it's a great goal to think my house is going to be a gathering place and a central place, so let's build around that goal. So you guys have done that very well. Uh, in terms of what we put in it, I've already, if you go on the Volley channel, if you're, if you're a Volleyer, you'll have already seen artwork tour of the Paradise. The artwork tour. But you will notice there's instruments here. We wanted yes. this to be a place where people would sit down and do what you were just doing before we started filming. I remember. Uh, play the piano. You know, sometimes if somebody sits down and rips off some licks on the bass guitar, then they <laughs> call me impressed. But <laughs> um, yeah, there's instruments. There's an old record player over there. There's um, games sitting in those shelves over there. Yeah, that brings me to a question I wanted to ask. We'll skip this table for a second, come back to that. But as I consider this living area, which I know your family hangs out in this space, and I look around this and I say to myself as an American, where's the TV? There, there's no TV what? in this living space. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, no TV. Uh, this is in, intended to be the space where people are forced to either interact with each other or have some sort of creative boredom that happens. So yeah. there's a lot of books. I'm going to plug a book while we're at it. The greatest non-Bible book ever written? It's actually not. It's a rewrite for young children. Uh -huh. uh, if you've ever read Pilgrim's Progress to Young Children, you, like me, might have experienced their horror at some of the uh, passages. Uh -huh. uh, this is called Little Pilgrim's Progress. Show us an illustration. And it's a great way to intro the story. Um, let's just take a look at the Celestial King. Oh, now that's, so, that's a winner. Yeah. Um, All right. But Little Pilgrim's Progress. Books like that, Lord of the Rings over there in the corner, uh -huh. those are things we'll do on a Shabbat or when we have some time before bed out here as a whole family. We've actually gotten away from reading in bed rooms to the kids individually because we have three kids and we've realized it's a lot better to read out here something that everybody in the family is going to enjoy. Great. And then we send them to bed and they get to read on their own. Great. So. Speaking of Shabbat, tell us about the table here. What's the, what's the idea here? Why did you make this decision? I wish yeah. that, because last night we had a gathering here and I had this thing at its full length, which we had to shove it that way, because this will hold about 25 people. That's awesome. Um, when it's fully expanded. But um, we just wanted a big giant table and man, I'm gonna sound like Mr. Budget Guy, but I thought initially, let's have a craftsman build us an heirloom piece. Yeah. I still think that would be awesome. Uh -huh. It's not a no forever. However, I did price that out and it was a roughly equivalent to a Honda Accord to make that okay. happen right. for a table of this size. So we found this sucker uh, at, a, at a bargain basement deal That's and it great. meets all our needs. That's great.
Um, do you know there's a verse in Proverbs um, that says, um, wine is a mocker and strong drink is raging and whoever is thereby deceived is not wise. Have you ever heard that verse? What are you about to say? I mean, I'm just gonna just ask for a tour of your house and I'm just... Uh, no, we like to we like to have a little cocktail from from time oh, okay, to time. Okay, all right. Um, Why don't you uh, show us this this thing on your wall here? All right. This is the Parrot Family Vision Statement. Let's make sure you can get a read there. All right. Um, but I've talked about this on the podcast a bunch. But that's our vision statement: with truth and love, we cultivate well-ordered households built for endurance and abundance. So that's something that we'll point to from that table over there at Shabbat and ask the kids, how did you experience being a parrot out in the world this oh, week? Wow. Uh, and that's one of my regular rotation Shabbat items. You know, sometimes we uh, grab a picture of a family member and we're doing a special birthday Shabbat or something like that. But, but this family vision is often one of my Q and A's for the kids is, or or even for adults at the table. Um, I guess it would just be my wife if it's this. Right. I'm right. not gonna ask some guest to live out our family vision. <laughs> um, and you know that's a teaching thing. A lot of times we get, oh, I don't know, I didn't. Sure. And it's like, oh, actually, I saw you doing it this week. Here's what I saw. Okay. So we use that a lot. Um, can you while we're here by the back door? Can, can you show us anything outside here? I think it, well, I think I'll give you just a see. quick peek through the window yeah, here. Okay. This is our fire pit where yeah. a lot of guys groups happen, sometimes girls groups. We had a wonderful experience the other night when my daughter was having a birthday where we had 12 and 13 year olds and they wanted mom and dad to sit around the fire with them and chat, which I thought that's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, that's home run. There's a golden doodle here. B. Okay. Good. She could she could take or leave the home tour. And this dog is superior to your old dog, which was named Dirk. This dog is my favorite animal I've ever had. Okay. okay. It's the first dog I've ever had that I thought this dog is better than no dog. Um, well, it's like you know the poodles. They make people love them. It's a rainy day out there, so we won't go tour around, but I'll maybe get some more video for you of the backyard in about four weeks here when we've got a suka oh, up and running. Okay, so. okay. Um, we'll take a quick peek down the hallway. All right. This is some family photos. Okay. And I will say we are one of the, I turned 40 yesterday. Oh, happy birthday. Thank you. Wow. One of the gifts that's, if you look over there behind the golf clubs, there's a bunch of bags. I don't know if you can see them. In the, in the corner right. Oh, yeah, under the silhouettes of there. the mirrors. Okay. Um, that's full of, of picture frames, and we have about 50 photos going back as far as 300 years. Whoa! Of people from our family, and that's what this whole wall is oh, going that's to gonna be become. Something else. So I'm sorry to those who are getting removed, but you're yeah, going to yeah. be replaced. Tough luck. We can see. I have a lot of daughters. Uh huh. And. Uh, you know, we can peek in this bedroom. Yeah, I might have, I might have even tidied it up. Oh, <laughs> just, just for the, just for the uh, video shoot here. All right, we've seen kids' bedrooms. Okay. Next, I would like to take you, really briefly, to a place that you're becoming familiar with on, All right. this, on this trip, which is the guest <laughs> suite. Now, when we, okay, the guest suite. So, how did you find this space when you moved in? We went and why down. Have you done what you've done? We went down the stairs, and it was there. We found it, and we said, "Wow, here it is!" Wow, we found it. Are we the first to ever see this space? Um, I think when we first moved in, it was kind of a disaster down there, like the rest of the house. It was not a place you would want to be, uh, and we actually had somebody that was a household uh, employee living down there for a while, and. She found it uh, acceptable for her needs, but when she moved out, we said, what if we turned this into a space that could actually serve the family vision more than just be a basement where junk gets stored? Okay. So what we're gonna see is we ripped everything out, put in, it, it wasn't a crazy project, but we got together with some contractor friends and said, now how can we make a bathroom in a space that's technically too small for a bathroom? So we did some creative engineering there, uh, 
and now we can easily you know host a family of six or seven people wow down there all right let's check it out forest here oh. here we do have a television because all right we found that sometimes a guest wants an excuse to go have some alone time and right. even if they don't want to watch tv they'll just come sit in the couch right but uh we can kind of see this is the the space in which Man, you're this staying. is this is big and comfortable here. So you've got a bedroom. We've for, got uh, some adults here. A bedroom for this weekend. This is going to be a bedroom for adults too. But usually this is for kids. Right. That's great. And then you you got to see this this tiny bathroom. The tiny bathroom that works works like a big bathroom. Are you speaking from experience? Well, no, but I I, I, I recognize the furniture in it, and then there's the little guy there and all that stuff. Oh, it's everything you need. It is a low ceiling, as you just oh, found watch out. out. Briefly, we'll stop here. Um, we, we have a little whiteboard. This is kids checking off books from their, their reading list that we created for them. Okay. This would be the family planning calendar available for sale at familyteams.com oh, okay. friend of the podcast Jeremy Pryor actually designed by another friend of the podcast TJ Musidis and Brooke um, so all sorts of friends Neat. involved in this project but we use this every week to kind of Neat. plan our week I talked about the art separately but I'll just mention it here okay. I really think that artwork uh, I didn't know this until I stumbled into it, so this was kind of not intentional. But that we purchased on this trip, which oh. we took a big family vacation to India. You can see me with my three little girls. Um, uh -huh. I also brought my wife on this trip. Okay. And that was something my wife saw that was like a blanket, and I think she paid $3 for it in a market. Overpriced. But, <laughs> thank you. Uh, you know, every time we look at that, we think about this trip that really was transformative for our family. And so I really, once that happened, we started saying, when we go places, we're on the hunt for artwork that will remind us of cool experiences. Or when we live somewhere, can we have something that reminds us of that place? There's, things, right. there's things in this house that are Cincinnati <clears throat> because we feel like we have a little connection to Cincinnati. Hey now. Um, and then there's other artwork like the one behind you that is just my in-laws collected vintage posters. So you'll see some vintage posters up in the house. That's a good financial planner poster uh -huh. from World War II. Make it do. Uh, and then this is a painting that my sister-in-law did. Oh, wow. She's a artist that does kind of unique silk watercolor. It's a great point that uh, with valuable wall real estate, it seems a shame to simply stuff IKEA prints on there when you could be reinforcing um, love of family. And also, your cinematographer. Hello. Uh, so this all upstairs was kind of a phase two okay. of the Reno project, and some of it was DIY. I actually did some work up here. What? Some of it was a uh, close friend of you and I, and I'm gonna call him a friend of the podcast. Okay. Paul Nichols came in from Ohio. Wow! And built these great cabinets for us. What do you know? Um, so this is one of my favorite features of the whole house. Okay. And when we built these- This guy loves shelves. He loves shelves. I love having a ton of books. Uh -huh. um, do you know you know VJ, one of our fans I do. on the Volley Channel? Long Island. He he was an, of an opposite opinion to me and said, "Hey, I really believe like few books and give them away a lot, read uh -huh. them over and over." I'm okay with that, uh -huh. but I love having a big library. We have separated by section. There's the heretical theology <laughs> section. There's the solid theology uh -huh. section. There's mostly fiction in here, but anyways, okay. we like to read a lot. Right. Um, that section over there of the house, this is where if we're gonna do a game as a family, 
we're likely to be over here uh, at this little table. I'll yeah, meet, that's uh, a great size table for games. I'll meet with a client across. here if I need space to meet with a He'll client. He'll do it. He'll do it, everybody. He'll meet with a client. Um, these books are mostly kid books and games and stuff, so that shelf tends to be a little less orderly. Unruly? Okay. Yeah. And then the centerpiece of really our family life, <laughs> the 70 inch flat screen TV. <laughs> uh, no, we're not anti television here. My wife and I like to watch a movie from time right. to time. And so we just bought this couch recently after about 15 years of rough use on a, a budget couch. We said, let's get a cool sofa to, to have our kids as they're getting older and having friends over have somewhere to sit. Um, Let me just interject, I for, forgive me for speaking when I'm not on camera, but I, we have the same philosophy as you, which is we're not against turning on a televised or filmed program. Well, I mean, Give I really me this. Want to do this. Well, you gotta be picked up by that shotgun mic. You know, we're not against watching uh, something on the screen in our home. We just don't want that screen thing to be taking up, again, prime real estate in family space, the main family living space. So if you go to my house, it's a lot like Mark's. There's a kitchen that goes into a living space and we want that to be productive and relational space because people spend a lot of time there. We don't want it to be veg out and consume space, which this is, and that's totally fine. But we don't want that to be the theme of the of the family together, which is I know you all you all thought too. Yeah, you got a little fun Washington D.C. art on the wall up there. All right. Again. You lived there. Place where we lived. Matches the chair. Uh huh. And here. Oh, gonna... I think the people want to see this room. Yeah, I do too. This is where you, you hear from me week in and week out. Yeah. Uh, if you're a YouTube watcher, then you see the background, which I will admit I have decorated with some plain old Ikea art because yeah, yeah. I needed something to sit in the background. Yeah, so people are used to seeing you sitting in that chair with this kind of a look right here. They're used to seeing that background, but there's so much more happening in this room. That's true. We've First got... of all, I didn't even know this until I walked in here a couple of hours ago. There's a putting green on the floor. Yep. If you, you never know it. If you've done a call with me that was like an hour, there's a good chance I was kind of fidgeting <laughs> with a putter while I was talking to you. Uh, but this is where I work. This is where I spend a lot of time every day. If you look up at the ceiling, when this is the, this was initially this is a very go-go ceiling here. The hot tub room. Uh huh. And when we moved into this house, the whole room was floor walls ceiling was all that uh -huh. and that's still there i just took the drywall and stuck it right onto I'll the wood darned. and screwed it in so. So, so so listen children youngsters there was a time in our nation's history when people thought let's put a hot tub indoors Inside. upstairs and you can walk like from your bedroom just walk into the hot tub room and do god knows what in there yeah i mean i'm gonna say it's a little weird Oh, it's a lot weird. That that existed and the deadbolted master bedroom, which I haven't. That is really strange. I could replace this, I suppose. Uh, but uh, yeah, a little strange. That is really strange. So I'll give the, you. It's the room where all the magic. Happens. Well, I just want to show people when he sat there doing the podcasts. Here's his little microphone. He's he's looking at himself in the mirror the whole time. What do you think of that? Let's not judge him, but that's what his setup looks like. Okay, there he is. Just a little note to my wife from one of my daughters. Hello. Dear mom, I love you so much, and you are an inspiration. And then we're kind of in the in the final stages of this home tour. Oh. But here you've got another space that we redid. We decided on using a barn door, which I don't think anyone's ever thought no, of. No, that's kind of a new idea. Uh, Two-headed shower. I'm a big fan of the two-headed shower. I think a shower should never be a solitary activity. Okay. But... <laughs> um, and... <laughs> this room is like not what we would have ever designed for ourselves. Because I always think 
why do you need a giant bedroom? Right. You, you also have a giant bedroom? I had the same deal. Where I walked into my bedroom the first time and I thought, uh, are we supposed to put in a sport court? Yeah. So this is a work in progress. Uh, my wife is actively shopping the estate sales looking for the right uh, vintage she wants dresser. To put something on that wall. She wants like a giant dresser and to get rid of that black thing I bought when we were engaged yeah. and I was preparing an apartment okay. uh, to receive a wife. But, but isn't it nice to have a little private reading, sitting, praying space? Yes, I rarely use this. Oh, okay. um, so it can be, but we usually find that the upstairs is ours after bedtime. That might change as we're starting to get older and older right. kids where this could become more useful to I us. I like this macrame thing you got going here. Yeah. It's unusual. Mexico City. Uh -huh. This was uh, one of those things we said, let's bring something back. And we actually had family living in Mexico City and they said, hey, uh, we, we work with this guy that does weavings. Something like this, not cheap in America. Right, if you got it from some rug dealer or something. Jose in Mexico City will make you this for $30. Hey now! So, you know, All right. there you go. And that's that's. Will you show of, Will you show us the secret room and over oh, the? Uh, well. Oh, that wasn't previewed for the uh, home tour video. Yeah, we can see it. Okay. There's a space. I, I think it's cool because it's a little bit of Abraham's Wallet Outpost Advisors lore. But ah. there's this was my office because the thing we just saw is my office used to be the nursery when uh -huh. we had infants, um, and. This was my office, and it is just the space above the garage. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one window, as you'll see, that's about this big. Uh, it doesn't have any heat or AC, so I had to put in a <laughs> uh, split unit in there. <laughs> and right now, it has served different purposes in life, mostly where we throw junk. Right now, it is that, and it's got my poker table. <laughs> And it, my wife is sort of playing with some ideas ha! to turn it into a teen hangout space. Okay. So, so this is a moment in time. It's, it's you know, it is what it is right now. It looks like... It's a catch-all. It's been a catch-all space. It looks like there's baby dolls napping in here. So we're going to okay. want to... Oh, gosh. Everybody be quiet. <laughs> gosh. <laughs> you can see some... Some, uh, some strategy. Is this the, the aforementioned poker table? Yeah, get a load of this. All right, I'm ready. This sucker comes off. Hold on now. Hold on a second. There's a poker table under there. Yeah. Okay. Um, I do have a giant whiteboard that I don't know what to do with, but I love it. Uh -huh. um, oh, you know, this makes you look like a, a founder because the founders, they love to have a big whiteboard to put all their big plans on. Yeah. You got some bikes over there. You got some golf clubs, little kid golf clubs. Catch yeah. all. The I'm a is... little embarrassed that you're seeing my junk room. Yeah, that's but that's all right. what you're seeing. Everybody's got one. Awesome. And with that, I tell you, thanks for uh, stopping by the Parrot House. I think uh, hopefully you get to. S We've done a few of these for other people, but hopefully the next one we do is the manual home yeah maybe. i will be in the manual home in just a few short weeks oh well, we can switch roles then okay thank you for showing us around your world and how your home serves your family's vision <laughs>